Welcome everyone to the Platform Special Interest Group. Um, let's look at the agenda. I'm going to share my screen to show that. It's the Independence Day weekend in the United States, and so some of our U.S. participants may not be here today. Here are the items that I have on our list for today. Oh, here I can do it this other way. There. So we'll talk about open action items. Um, we had an option to have Natasha talk about the plugin installation manager tool and its latest latest iterations. Natasha is US based, so she may be out today. Um, Windows installer status. Uh, again, Alex Hurl may be out today. Oleg, if you'd be willing, we'd love to hear a comment on progress with release drafter and how that's going. Oh, okay. And then performance test framework. And I'm not sure that Ab Abudia is going to be here today. So Oleg, if there's something you want to report there, that would be great. Otherwise, we'll defer it to another time. Yeah, I think that uh, we can just uh, declare success and uh, exclude it from agenda. Because yeah, like we discussed at uh, the last meeting, everything is in place. Uh, there was even blog post was uh, released by the time of the previous meeting. So basically, the part for performance test framework is done. Uh, we will be doing some improvements, but uh, only on the ad hoc basis. So when we lack some uh, features, uh, the framework is fully completed, it's available, it's documented. So whomever is interested, you can just start using it. And there is a blog post for that. Great, excellent. All right, so, and I'm going to put a to do for me because I really want this one, which is Mark use uh, the framework to compare Git client 2.8 and 3.0. In particular, mm -hmm. we've got, oh, that was a mistake. In particular, we've got a major component change inside that, uh, the JGit upgrade. There we go. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And if you want, I can also summarize uh, the project, uh, the work by Natasha. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, so let's let's have you take that topic then. Summary by Oleg. Yeah. So basically, to summarize it, yeah, again, I'm going to put a link to the blog post. Uh, but yeah, generally. Last week we had a uh, JSOC presentation. There is a demo of the current state of the plugin installation manager tool. The tool has been released as alpha version, so if somebody wants, you can try it out. Uh, there are ongoing updates, but yeah, the first version uh, is available uh, for users. It basically uh, replicates installed plugins SH from Docker, uh, but yeah, there will be more features added soon. Excellent, thank you. Thanks very mm -hmm. much. Then in terms of back to the open action items, I don't have anything to report other than that the action items that are listed as open remain open for me. I assume similar for you, Oleg? Yeah. Okay. Now I see you mentioning the configuration as code plugin. Um, is there anything here that we need to be discussing, I assume that its sub-project work is ongoing, nothing specific to platform, just continues. Yeah, nothing specific to platform. So we, we do have some overlap, of course, but yeah, nothing really specific at the moment. Great. So I just added it uh, to provide more context. Great, thank you, thanks very much. So since Alex isn't here, that would tend to lead us to, to skip the installer status. You willing to give us a current status on the release drafter? I know that we I saw a, a pull request to the Jenkins repository itself, to the core yeah. repository. Yeah, I can show the current progress. Um, yeah, so if you let me share my screen, I can just uh, uh, sh uh, show it quickly. Mm -hmm. You bet. You should be able to share now. Okay. Uh, so one of the important updates is that currently uh, release drafter uh, as an experiment is considered as success. So that uh, if 
anybody is interested to try it out again you can go uh, and get some documentation so the documentation now is uh, in the github repository and there, uh, there is a file that release draft radoc which basically explains how to use it um, and how to get it applied uh, so yeah, um, this is uh, all the documentation uh, where you can find guidelines i will just post the link uh, but yeah, mm, it's been adopted, so now we had something like 26 uh, repositories. And these repositories include plugins, uh, various uh, core components, development tools, and also links. Uh, yeah, you can find uh, some examples here. But uh, yeah, basically almost all active development tools have been already updated to release drafter. So for example, the Jenkins test harness is here. And the uh, recent change from the last uh, week with the plugin compatibility tester has been also moved to release drafter. But uh, this repository didn't have release flow or release process at all for a while. But now yeah, you get some automated generated drafts. Uh, well, you may see that there is quite a number of changes and more changes coming soon. But yeah, this is a use case of real release drafter application. Uh, with a lot of changes generated, with hyperlinks, with machine and conf contributors. And uh, all these uh, releases are basically generated just by configuration of several lines. The rest comes from the global configuration, and yeah, the link uh, I provided here describes uh, how to use it. Okay. So there, were some, there were some initial questions with regard to Mm -hmm. permissions on repositories. So if I enable this for the Git plugin, for instance, it's as simple as adding a release drafter.yaml to the to the .github directory on my repository, on the repository I maintain, and that's it. Um, not exactly, because you also need to enable the release drafter. So ah. we do not enable it for the entire organization. Uh, we enable it only for repositories uh, we manage. And if somebody wants to add uh, more uh, repositories, there are two options. So if you are admin in your repository, you can just configure it on your own. If you're not admin, you can create an infra ticket and we will get configured it for you. But after that, you can proceed. So the consideration you still need to keep in mind in security because yeah, release drafter still requires full write access. So it means so that the release drafter uh, application will be able to, let's say, merge uh, changes, uh, push uh, code, etc. Well, assuming there was any code uh, to do that in this application. But yeah, you, uh, from the security perspective, yeah, it's a decision to be made by mentors. So it's pretty like, depend about on other tools, you either trust it or you do not trust it. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to enable it by default. Uh, but in the case of Git plugin, since you don't have continuous delivery in your repository, um, so we, even if release drafter uh, integrates something, release drafter doesn't have permission to deploy the release uh, to Jenkins or whatever. Uh, so yeah, uh, for these repositories, we are not concerned at all. Uh, the concern comes from the repositories which have a kind of continuous delivery of production code base. For example, for plugin compatibility tester, yes, we have continuous delivery for Docker images here. But uh, this is a development tool, so basically we don't care much. Uh, but yeah, if it was production image, of course, uh, there would be more security considerations about that. Okay. Yeah, another update, which makes sense to mention. Uh, yeah. Just another week uh, this week, and apparently there was a case when uh, change logs uh, got delayed. Uh, there is even a Jenkins Jira ticket for that. Uh, so the context uh, behind that is that uh, change logs, uh, which you can see here, Jenkins IO change log, they are basically maintained uh, uh, by me and Daniel. Well, uh, Daniel usually writes uh, these change logs. Uh, if Daniel is not available, sometimes I do that. Uh, but yeah, this weekend uh, none of us was available, uh, and uh, on Monday none of us was available either, uh, due to uh, some other stories. So basically, this change log got delayed, and we got a number of issues asking uh, with the change log, etc. Uh, this change log, yeah, it's not released drafter, it's not generated automatically, it's managed uh, manually. Uh, but yeah, we had a discussion with Daniel about what if we actually try to automate something at least for 
draft purposes. Uh, so this change log is currently managed uh, by YAML files. Uh, so in Jenkins, here we can find, for example, a weekly, uh, just a second, weekly YAML. So this is our file which basically describes this change log. So the biggest advantage of this file is that it's machine readable. At least the Raptor is not machine readable per se because it generates markdown. Uh, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we would be still interested to have some release automation. And what I've done, I just made an experiment which actually configures release uh, drafter to generate uh, Jenkins compatible YAMLs. So this is a pull request for that. Uh, basically, it generates change logs like that. So it's fully compliant with the format being generated. Uh, Weekly YAML, uh, Daniel Beck has a script which generates drafts. And here, what I have done, I just uh, hacked the release driver, draft configuration to generate markdown, which includes YAML, which includes our change log. Uh, there are some uh, details there, for example, uh, to parse uh, issue references uh, and to put uh, them uh, to YAML, it was less trivial than just uh, putting that because, well, there is no engine for that. We also uh, do not uh, generate type automatically. There are uh, tickets created to release drafter in order to retrieve this information. Uh, but this uh, generates some stops and yeah, currently it's in review and probably we will have it. And if we integrate that, maybe in addition to manually generated change logs, we will, be, we will have something in uh, GitHub releases, uh, but mostly as preview. So it means that uh, whomever is interested will be able to go there and to see this preview uh, so before we finally release the final version. So this is the idea behind, the, behind that. Yeah, there were some comments, for example, from Jesse, what if we just go all in the GitHub releases and do some integrations. So right now it's not in the scope of my prototype. But yeah, if somebody is interested to do that, uh, you're welcome to do so. See, and I, I like the notion that what you're presenting is a draft mm -hmm. that anyone can read in the repository at any time, and then Daniel can paste it to the official change log and publish it when, or, or you, whoever, whoever is running, acting in that role, gets mm -hmm. to use it instead of the scripting that is already being used. So that, that seems very attractive. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. So yeah, mm, hopefully we'll get it. So basically, I'm waiting for feedback from Daniel about next steps, uh, because yeah, one of the ways is to actually yeah, we could really generate uh, these uh, change logs uh, in GitHub releases. We can then implement crawler which would take these change logs and get them to Jenkins IO so that uh, we are not expected uh, to do something on Mondays or even worse on weekends. Uh, but yeah, so far it's just experiment. I'm not sure where it lands and whether it lands at all. But yeah, let's see. Yeah, thank you. I, I think it's it's elegant. So the it, generating YAML from release drafter, I assume that's not necessarily something that the original authors had envisioned. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, right. So basically I created a ticket to make it uh, more uh, defined. So here, for example, you can see that uh, tool man team, uh, yeah, Tim Lucas is a maintainer of uh, release drafter, so he already provided some feedback. So maybe we will have something like that, but it, it's yet to be defined. Mm. And yeah, here it looks like somebody experiments this, this change as well. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so neither Daniel Beck nor me commit. Uh, yeah, so basically, it's a copy paste. So somebody just experiments with our stuff. I'm not sure who is it. But, well, any experiments are uh, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Is it even Jenkins? But, or whatever. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is something I hope to learn eventually. Yep. Full disclaimer. My work at all. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And I see that Alex Earl has joined us. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? 
we had put a topic on the agenda and assumed that since it's Independence Today in the U.S. that you might not might not join us. Great that you're here. I think we should switch to that topic now, and uh, I'm going to share my screen again so we can see the agenda. Let's see, I think I've got the right one shared. Can everybody see the agenda? Yeah, I can. Great. So Oleg has provided us an update on plugin install manager and a performance test framework and just finished the discussion on our release drafter. Alex, your timing is perfect. You want to give us a status report on the Windows installer? So I'm continuing to working uh, with um, Old Block. I can't remember its real first name. Uh, Olivier. Thank you. Um, on the, um, the infrastructure, um, it's kind of hard. He's on a very different time zone. So having direct contact, we're usually offset by quite a bit of time, it seems like. Um, and we're just trying to get that um, the trusted agent up and working, uh, and then I can start testing the framework build, the Windows agent, I should say. Great, thank you. Anything else that you wanted to share as an update there? Um, I've also it's not directly related to this, but um, I've started um, hacking on the um, Docker images or the agents as well as the um, the Jenkins Docker image but for Windows um, that that's currently not there I've submitted two PRs so far for the um, JNLP agent and the normal agent images uh, they're kind of work in progress because there's no way to um, build them on um, ci.jenkins right now um, Oleg mentioned that Docker Hub may be a good place to do that uh, for those. Uh, so I'll look at that. I'll also look at App Bear possibly. Um, although once we, <clears throat> I think once we get um, the trusted CI Windows agent set up, it should be able to be used on the on CI.Jenkins as well. So that may alleviate that problem as well. Mm -hmm. Great. That's that's. Now, I wasn't aware of Docker support inside the Jenkins infrastructure at all for Windows as an agent. So are, is there work that's happened elsewhere that's allowing that to, 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 to actually succeed? So this, is, this isn't necessarily for um, agents on CI.Jenkins. There's just been a request from a few people recently for Docker images for agents that they can run within their own infrastructure. Similar ah. to, uh, yeah. Okay, I so so this would be a Windows hosting the agent, um, the Docker agent, uh, and it would run. It, therefore, we're running a Windows operating system, Windows in the agent. <clears throat> yeah, Windows Windows Docker can run both Linux and Windows containers, but this is a Windows container itself. Okay. Should say the right one. Thank you. Well, that, that's cool because I could certainly benefit from that. There are plenty of cases where I need Windows on Docker for a certain set of plugins that I maintain. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so for agent images, uh, basically, uh, once you feel that the pull requests are good enough to be integrated, uh, I'm ready to integrate them. Because for agents, uh, we have a Docker Hub powered uh, continuous delivery flow. So you can add whatever you want in your Docker files, in your scripts, the delivery. I'll, I'll look into that and see see what would be necessary for that uh, from the in, in terms of building these items. It looked when I uh, when I looked the other day, it didn't look like they had support for Windows containers yet. So mm -hmm. that was, so it looked like AppVer may be the, the best solution for the Windows containers right now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there are other CICD services. So basically, if Docker Hub doesn't work for us, you know, things like Codefresh, maybe Codeship or whatever, if any of them supports uh, building uh, Docker images uh, for Windows, we could use it. Okay. Cool, I'll take a look. <coughs> yeah. 
So yeah, if, if it's up here, it's even better because we already have some components built on up here. So it may be found out. But, yeah. So the components we have on that layer right now is that WinSXW? So yeah, Windows Service Wrapper and Windows Process Management Library is built on up here because the agent is IO. So there are two issues. The agent is IO firstly doesn't provide enough Windows infrastructure. Uh, we need to test on multiple Windows versions, which is not available. Uh, we need a Visual Studio for of particular versions. It's also not available. So yeah, going forward with Appear was uh, the most straightforward way for me. And the second uh, problem that uh, these projects are still uh, not within uh, Jenkins organization on GitHub. They're within uh, Kiki's personal repository. We had some discussions about moving uh, them, but we have never completed that. Uh, but yeah, so at some point uh, we might want uh, to move that and it would uh, block it. Uh, when I was talking to Tyler last time, he was strongly against adding CI for companies uh, outside the Jenkins organization, even if Jenkins is one of the main consumers. I see. So, so is that well? So, needs more discussion, more investigation. Sounds useful. Sounds very useful. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else, Alex? No, that's all for me. Thanks. Oleg, anything further from you? Mm, no, nothing specific. All right, I think we've reached the end of our session, and thanks very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you all. Bye.